Hello everyone and welcome to the special FB live session hosted by Apollo Spectra. I'm your host Twincy Ansonil and today we have a fantastic event lined up for you. We are here to discuss all things related to irritable bowel syndrome that is IBS. So if you have any questions make sure that you drop them in the comments below. Our expert for the day is Dr. Tejaswini Dande, specialized in medical gastroenterology from Bangalore Gastro Center, practicing at Apollo Spectra from Monday to Saturday, 3 p.m. to 5 p.m. Welcome, Dr. Tejaswini. Thank you so much. So let's kick off with the basics. So what exactly is IBS? So IBS or irritable bowel syndrome is a dysfunction of gut-brain interaction. There is a miscommunication between the gut nerves and the brain which makes your gut more sensitive. So the nerves within the gut are a little more perceptive to even normal amount of gas within the intestine. So because of this there may be bloating, cramping, increased perception of pain. Along with this, the gut motility as well is affected because of which there may be constipation or diarrhea or alternating episodes of both. And is IBS very common these days? It is very common. We see almost around 10% of global population is affected by irritable bowel syndrome. What are the most common symptoms seen in IBS patients? So generally patients with irritable bowel syndrome come to us with abdominal pain, bloating, cramping, along with either diarrhea or constipation. In women, there may be flare-up of symptoms during their periods. Alright, and who is at risk for developing IBS? IBS is seen in patients in their 20s to 40s. Usually, women tend to be affected more commonly than men. Patients with family history of IBS or patients with a lot of stress and anxiety in their life or who have had recent digestive tract infection may be at more risk of having or developing irritable bowel syndrome. Does IBS affect the patient's lifespan? Uh, IBS is a chronic syndrome as in it uh, tends to last lifelong. Sometimes there may be betterment in the symptoms, sometimes it may remain the same without worsening, but it generally doesn't affect the lifespan of a patient. That's really reassuring. So will the patient develop cancer due to IBS? Uh, IBS does not really cause any structural damage in the intestine, so there will be very little risk of cancer in these patients. We have a few more questions in line for you. Does stress increase the symptoms? Uh, stress is one of the major trigger factors for symptoms of irritable bowel syndrome. Almost 50 to 60 percent of patients who have irritable bowel syndrome have stress as a trigger factor. And when should a patient consult with a doctor? So whenever a patient who has, um, if the patient has blood in stools or there is a low hemoglobin count, there are nighttime symptoms, there is fever, weight loss, loss of appetite, or the patient is above the age of 50 or recent onset of symptoms, these are the patients who need to consult with their doctor. What we do is generally whenever patients come to us with these alarm symptoms, we tend to do a colonoscopy on them. A colonoscopy is nothing but a fiber optic tube attached to a camera. So that is inserted through the anal canal and we tend to check the entire large intestine and a small part of small intestine. And if we find any structural abnormalities like ulcers or any swellings, we tend to biopsy them. Alright, that's a really great explanation. Is it due to what the patients eat or what type of food should be avoided in IBS? So generally, there is something called a low FODMAP diet that can be followed in patients with irritable bowel syndrome. FODMAP means fermentable oligosaccharides, monosaccharides, disaccharides and polyols. Basically, these are sugars which may not be absorbed in the small intestine in some people. So in these people, what happens is the intestinal bacteria act on these uh, food substances. They ferment them, cause a lot of, produce a lot of gas, and this may lead to a lot of IBS symptoms. Usually FODMAP, high FODMAP is found in apples, wheat, dairy, certain nuts. If you just Google, you'll get a whole list of things that contains high FODMAPs. And these can be avoided and patients tend to feel better in almost like 50 to 80 percent symptomatic betterment is seen in these patients. Along with this general uh, food modification like avoiding spices, masala and oil in the food, avoiding fried and fatty food, avoiding tea, coffee, alcohol, smoking, along with wheat and dairy itself may be sufficient in a lot of people. 
That's quite insightful. Will probiotic help with IBS patients? So probiotics are basically good bacteria. They may be helpful in some patients, but then not all probiotics are the same. So talk to your doctor before starting on probiotics. Are there any home remedies for ID, IBS and does yoga and relaxation techniques help? Yeah. So home remedies again, uh, basically diet and lifestyle changes. So trying to avoid spices, masala and oily food, um, avoiding tea, coffee, trying to have smaller portions of food more frequently, which doesn't trigger the symptoms too much. Eat once in two, three hours. Don't lie down as soon as you eat. And along with this, you can keep a food log so that, you know, you can note down what you eat in a particular day and whether any particular food is causing any trigger so that you can try and avoid these uh, food items. Along with that, exercise and other yoga relaxation techniques may be helpful. And these can be practiced at home and they patients with mild IBS symptoms tend to have relief just with home remedies. I have one last question for you. Are IBS and IBD the same? So IBS is irritable bowel syndrome. There is no structural damage to the intestine over here. It's basically a disorder of gut and brain interaction. Whereas in IBD, there are ulcers within the intestine. They may have uh, diarrhea along with blood in stools or pain abdomen. And these patients will require lifelong medications. So IBD is more of a structural thing, whereas IBS is more of a gut brain disorder. Now, before we wrap up, do you have any final thoughts or advice for our audience? Yeah. So I think irritable, living with irritable bowel syndrome is quite challenging. Uh, but then be assured that, you know, the symptoms don't tend to get worsen uh, over a period of time. In fact, almost one third of patients may start feeling better and IBS symptoms may go away with time. Also, uh, like, you know, just practicing some lifestyle changes and yoga and meditation may be helpful. Of course, there is no specific cause for irritable bowel syndrome. So cure may not be possible, but definitely a good treatment plan whenever you have symptoms of flare up uh, will be helpful. So talk to your doctor about it. It's definitely manageable. Thank you so much, Dr. Tejaswini, for joining us today and sharing your expertise. And thank you to our viewers for tuning in. Remember, if you have any further questions or if you are interested in learning more about IBS, feel free to reach out to Apollo Spectra. So that's a wrap for today's session. Have a wonderful day, everyone. Thank you.